Well, good morning, church, and welcome. You know, this week I've been thinking a lot about how we are precious in God's sight. You know, um, in God's sight, a person is, is the most precious of all values. Um, this truth possessed Jesus. It never left him. He thought it. He taught it. Um, you know, he lived it with full devotion. Uh, you can see that in the stories of um, the lost sheep, uh, the coin, the son. Uh, you know, all of us are precious to God. He, he searches out for us. He wants us to come to find him. Um, so I hope you are finding ways to, to love your neighbor through this pandemic and love each other. Uh, but God is with us always, and that is good news. Uh, so let's lift our voices together. I raise 
a hallelujah. And Webman is a melody. And I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
And I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me
can compare to you. And who moves my heart the way you do? And who can compare to you? And who moves my heart the way you do? God bless you, and remember that we are all precious in His sight. Have a good one. Hey everybody, glad you're here. I hope you're all doing well in the midst of this shutdown. We're almost five weeks in now. Um, I know it's been rough on, on so many of you. I know for me personally, it's been kind of rough um, not being able to be out and about and doing the things that we're used to doing. Well, hopefully the end is near. Uh, not that end. <laughs> But hopefully the end of this um, shutdown, safer at home order is near and um, we'll be able to get back to normal. You know, in the midst of this shutdown, we've been meeting as a congregation in virtual grace groups. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet over um, the Internet, see each other's faces, talk to each other, pray with each other, encourage each other um, and, and learn from the scriptures together. Um, if you haven't yet taken part in that, um, go to our homepage and just um, click the button and sign up and we'll make sure that you get connected with a group. Um, our groups have been studying the seven signs of John. Um, these are seven miracles in the book of John that John himself says were meant to help people believe. And so as, as we're looking at these seven miracles, it, it occurred to me that there's a lot of, um, of things that go on and happen um, in between the miracles that are really important. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at John chapter 6. And in John chapter 6, there are two miracles right at the beginning. Um, the first one is Jesus feeding the 5,000, where he takes a schoolboy's lunch and um, he turns it into, you know, a, multi a multitude. Um, uh, <laughs> well, he feeds the multitude with it. He makes a meal that satisfies them. And when the disciples go to pick up with the leftovers, they find 12 baskets full. So, so Jesus provided a meal for everybody. Um, out of that, the, the crowd was really looking to make him king. And so Jesus slipped away and told his disciples to go ahead of him to Capernaum. And so they get into a boat and they start rowing toward Capernaum. And as they're doing that, um, there's a strong wind. They're rowing hard against the wind and against the waves. And Jesus comes walking to them on the water. Um, it scares them when they first see him. But when he gets in the boat, the boat, we're told, is just immediately at Capernaum. No more rowing, no more working. They just find themselves home um, in Capernaum. The next morning, what happens is the crowd is still there waiting to see Jesus. Um, they all received, um, you know, a great meal, and they're looking to see him again. Um, they saw the disciples get in the boat and head out for Capernaum, but they noticed that Jesus wasn't with them. So they're waiting for him. Um, but when he doesn't show up in the morning, they decide that they also will head for Capernaum because they know that's his hometown. So they get um, in their boats and they head off for Capernaum. And when they get to Capernaum, they ask Jesus this question. Um, they say, Rabbi, when did you get here? And instead of saying, well, last night about um, 3 a.m., <laughs> he says this. Jesus answered them and said, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. So he's saying to them, they didn't recognize the miracle or that it was from God. It's just that they received a gift and they, they liked the gift and they want more. And so Jesus says they're not following him because they recognize it as a miracle, but they're following after him because they want him to do more for them. <clears throat> He goes on and he says this. He says, Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. For on him the Father, even God, has set his seal. So he says, Look, if you want real food that satisfies forever, come to me and I will give it to you. They said therefore to him, What shall we do? that we may work the works of God. And Jesus said to them, This is the work of God, 
that you believe in him whom he sent. In other words, look, all you have to do is believe in me. Believe that I'm from God. Believe that I'm his messenger. Believe that I'm his representative to you. Just believe in me, in the one whom God sent. And, and here's where their true colors sort of come out. This is verse 30. They said therefore to him, What then do you do for a sign that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? I think, really? You, you guys just ate fish that never swam yesterday. And now you're asking for another sign. They go on in, in sort of a, a boastful fashion. They say, our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. So they're, they're hearkening back to their Jewish roots and they're saying that, you know, our, God, our, our fathers were taken care of in the wilderness by God. He provided them manna to eat bread from heaven um, for 40 years. So, so, you know, how are you going to top that, Jesus? And here's what Jesus says. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. So Jesus is saying, look, God is giving you bread. Bread that, that won't just satisfy for a moment, that will satisfy for eternity. Not will just satisfy physically, but satisfy spiritually. God is providing you that bread, that bread that comes out of heaven. And when they hear this, they say to Jesus, well, Lord, evermore give us the bread. <laughs> well, okay, we're ready. Give it to us. And Jesus says this to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. It's, it's very similar to what he said to the woman at the well in Samaria. You know, I can give you water to drink, and you'll never be thirsty again. But the interaction here takes a different turn. If you drop down into verse 41, it says, The Jews therefore were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. And they were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? So how does he say, I have come down out of heaven? You see, they're, they're struggling with the words that he's sharing with them. They're struggling with the idea that he actually could be the Messiah, the one sent from God, because they know his family and they know his upbringing. And so it's, it's, they're not really seeing him for who he is. And so if we drop back up to verse 35, I, I want to show you what Jesus has to say about that. We'll start again in verse 35. Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. So in reference to this crowd who followed him and are asking about him, he's saying, you don't believe in me because the Father hasn't given it to you to believe in me. If you were of the flock that God had given me, you would believe. And if you believe, um, I will never cast you out. I, I imagine that as he's speaking to this crowd, there are individuals in the crowd who are believing. And there are many um, more individuals in the crowd who aren't believing. So some are going, yeah, he's the guy. And, and I want what he has to offer. And others are just thinking, this just really can't be the case. Jesus says to me, all who come to me, I will not cast out any. I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, this is verse 38, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. To me, that's 
That's just awesome, awesome news. <laughs> Think about it. If I believe in Jesus, if I see him for who he is, God's son in human flesh, come into the world to give himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. If I understand that that he went to the cross as a man and as God and he gave his life up in my place. He paid the price for my sin. When I recognize that, I'm, I'm immediately brought into his family. And when I'm brought into his family, I'm guaranteed he will raise me up on the last day. There's nothing, he says. I will lose nothing. I will raise them up on the last day. Now, I don't know when that last day is going to be. But I know that it's closer than it was yesterday. And I know that it's coming. And I know that Jesus promises to care for each and every one who believes in him. He says that if you come to me, if you believe in me, you will never be hungry again. You will never be thirsty again. Now, he's not talking about physical food or physical hunger or physical thirst. He's talking about satisfying your soul for eternity. There's no one else who can do that. Only Jesus can do that. When you get to the end of this chapter, you find that the crowd disperses and they all go away because they just can't handle the things that he said to them. And he turns to the disciples and he says to them, do you want to go too? And the disciples answer and say, where are we going to go? You're the only one who has the words of life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. If you believe in the Father, the scriptures tell us, you'd also believe in Jesus, his Son. Look to Jesus for who he is and believe. Trust him. Count on him to give you everything you need to bless you with every spiritual blessing and to raise you up on the last day. It's an awesome promise. It's a promise I'm looking forward to. It's actually a promise I can't wait to be fulfilled. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, again, we're so grateful for your presence in our lives, for your presence um, in each of our homes, Lord, during um, this pandemic. For you're with us when we're in and you're with us when we're out. Lord, teach us to believe in you, to trust you, to count on you for everything. Because, Lord, you're the possessor of everything. You can do anything. And you've promised to care for us and to raise us up on the last day. Thank you, Jesus. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week, all.